Hi guys, so today we are going to be planting these two summerific berry awesome hibiscus and these are a perennial type hibiscus. They are a hardy hibiscus. Uh, they're, uh, they can survive between zone 5 to zone 9. This is my first time planting hibiscus but I did some research on it to kind of figure out what the plant needs so that I don't kill it. <laughs> um, so I've been wanting to plant hibiscus for many years and I have a perfect spot for them. I'm going to be planting them in our apiary flower bed. So from the research that I've done, hardy hibiscus requires a slightly acidic soil and they also like a, a moist soil. Uh, some say boggy soil, some say moist soil, but they also require a well draining soil as, at the same time. So you want to keep them moist at all times, but you also want to uh, have them have the soil to be well draining because as soon as they dry out their leaves would fall off and all you have is just uh, sticks basically standing up. They also don't like a lot of phosphorus. I'm not sure why exactly. I want to do some more research on that but they prefer uh, more nitrogen and potassium uh, because these are an herbace herbaceous perennial so they die back completely to the ground every uh, fall or winter and they come back in the very late spring or early summer and uh, to put on all this growth with it, which they grow for to about five to six feet tall and wide and to put on all this leafy growth they require a lot of nitrogen and they also require a lot of potassium to help them with the uh, flower production and I'm guessing that also helps them with uh, stem and leaf health and with the root health as, as well. What I've also learned about hardy hibiscus is that they are the last thing to uh, come back in the spring. Uh, so everyone says to be patient with them. Uh, again, this is my first time planting them. So uh, I received them about maybe two or three weeks ago and I'm finally able to plant them. So it is hot. So what I want to make sure to provide them with uh, some irrigation right away if I am able to. And um, I want to make sure to keep them moist at all times. I don't want to have them dry out and die on me. Um, so the way how I'm going to fertilize them is I'm going to put some bone meal and also some um, pot ash from um, you know the ash that you the ash that you have left over from burning a wood pile. So we have a lot of that, and also we have some coals in it at the same time. It's all mixed in together, so I'm gonna be putting those in. It's gonna provide it with a lot of nitrogen and with potassium. And I'm also going to give it uh, a little bit of an um, all-purpose organic fertilizer for plants, uh, maybe some plant tone, um, and give it a lot of water. So I'm not going to give too much of each, just a little bit of each to provide it with everything that it needs so to make sure that these beauties do well. Let me show you the blooms on these. So this is the color of the blooms. It's a pink bloom. It's a, it's a dark pink bloom and uh, it also has a dark leaves. You can tell from here. It's like a reddish dark leaf with uh, some green striping to it. I wanted the I was, uh, I was debating whether to get this one or the Holy Grail. The Holy Grail has really dark leaves. They're super dark red leaves. And it also has super red, dark, like a dark, deep red uh, flowers. And they have like big, gigantic flowers. Um, they, they are beautiful, but I wasn't sure if I want to have this sort of color right next to the house. I kind of want to keep that color a little bit away because even though it is a beautiful plant and it's just it's stunning um, I want to have maybe uh, colors that would kind of lean more on the cooler side than on the warm side because with that one I feel like from what I've seen in the pictures that you can kind of match it with both colors but it seems to be a little bit too much in this area where I want it I don't want it to be like the center of attention that's not what I'm aiming for I kind of want them to sort of blend in in the background and I want the middle of that area to be the center of attention. So once we get there I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about. So these make one bloom, uh, they make uh, new blooms each day and they drop off the blooms the next day and you can kind of see them like they appear, they have a wilty appearance the next day and then they drop them off. And they also require a full to part sun 
location in the area that I'm going to be planting them it's full sun location full sun is six to eight hours and part sun is four to six hours and in that area it gets a lot more than eight hours uh, so they'll be fine over there and if I I might have been saying something about them coming back in the late spring um, I kind of got distracted a little bit so when they do come back in the late spring um, what I'm thinking about doing um, like you, you would have just a little bit of sticks so what I've seen some people do is they cut them back in the fall to about six uh, to eight inches high above the ground I'm thinking of not cutting them in the fall because we do get a lot of moisture we get a lot of rain and we get a lot of uh, snow and uh, sometimes we get wet snow so I don't want to risk rotting the stems and the rotting going down, down into the roots uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna leave the uh, uh, stems up in the late fall and then late in the spring when I start seeing any uh, new growth emerging that's when I will come back and cut them because I don't want to risk them dying they are beautiful plants and I want to uh, make sure that they're going to grow and be healthy this plant's bloom is about seven to eight inches wide that's the bloom so imagine that um, it's like it's a super big bloom and it, it should be covered in blooms if you have it in a full sun location um, so I'm gonna go grab what I need to plant these it, right now it's hot it's nice here in the shade but in the Sun it's it feels like it's about 100 degrees I'm not sure exactly what the temperature is but that's what it feels like so um, I'm gonna grab everything that I need and take you guys over there sorry for the Sun so I placed one of the hibiscus over here in this corner so you can see that's the entrance to the apiary garden I have the rhubarb it's doing okay the other one died but this one is still surviving that's because I have to water by hand over here and so there's one hibiscus over here and then if you go all the way to that end one over there and I place them about almost three feet um, three and a half feet away from the fence and this fence is uh, electric so we don't want them touching the fence when they grow so when they grow about five feet uh, wide they will not touch the fence because uh, that's five feet in diameter and this is the elephant ear that I planted only one of them came up I don't know if you guys can see it it's pretty sunny over here I hope you I hope you guys can see uh, so I'm, I'm hoping to be able to install irrigation right after I plant them blueberries are doing okay the other two that I planted I planted one elephant ear over here and one around over here they didn't come up I'm not sure why but uh, we'll address that situation um, maybe they're not receiving enough water so I have a funny hat on because I have my hair clip on and I don't want to take it off and my husband got me this hat uh, because he couldn't find a woman's hat so I'm just wearing this for now <laughs> so I'm gonna look funny uh, but the wind is about to blow it off of my head anyway so I think the reason why the other elephant ears did not come up is maybe because of water issues even though we did receive a lot of water but I'm just thinking maybe during the days where they didn't get water um, that caused them to not come up or maybe they rotted because of the excess amount of water I'm not sure I'm still holding my hopes up and hoping that they would sprout up at any moment uh, that they would prove me wrong but they haven't yet <laughs> so let's go ahead and plant these hibiscus I was going to bring my knee pad and I totally forgot. So I'm going to scoot the mulch over a little bit over here. Okay. I'm going to rip this a little like that. I don't need such a big hole, so I'm just using my hori hori knife. Okay, I 
can. I like to measure to see. Yep, looks good. I want the plant to be the same level as the surface of the soil. And then we are going to be covering it up with the mulch and uh, the cardboard. So I have some soil acidifier. I forgot to talk about this earlier. And I'm just going, oh, I'm sorry, that's bone meal. Yeah, there we go. And I'm just going to add a little bit to help with acidifying the soil. Uh, some people say that they don't, uh, they're not fussy about uh, whether they, they need acidic soil or uh, high alkaline soil. But from what I've read, it said that they do prefer acidic soil. So I'm just going to provide them with that anyways. And I'm also going to address the situation with my blueberries because I noticed that they need a little more acidity. So right after I plant these hibiscus, I'm going to be adding a little more soil acidifier around the blueberries just to help them out a little. Okay, then I'm going to add a tiny bit of bone meal just to help with the help the plant out with the cell structure and with the blooming and all that and with fruit production and over here I have some plant tone uh, the ratio between uh, nitrogen phosphorus and potassium is 5 3 3 so that's N P K nitrogen is for N N is for nitrogen P is for phosphorus and K is for potassium it looks like it has about the same level of phosphorus and potassium so I'm just gonna add a little bit of this A bit more. And we're going to mix it all in, in here, because in the dirt, I don't want, I'm, I'm going to scratch to scratch it into the surface of the dirt uh, where the roots are going to be, because I don't want the roots to directly touch the fertilizer, all this fertilizer. So there we go. Oh, I forgot to put a little fertilizer on top. Not a big deal. Anyways. So now we're going to put the plant in, whoop, look, pretty good root system. And I'm going to face this side um, over here, oh, stay here please. right after I plant them. It rained a lot yesterday so the soil is pretty moist but I feel like they're gonna need some water because it's pretty hot and they were in these cans so I'm sure they dry out pretty quickly. So I'm just gonna cover it up a little like that. And I'm going, I like to leave the tag next to my plants. It just helps me know what type of plant it is. Um, so that when I'm walking around in the garden, I can identify my plants and not forget if I want to replant it, if something happens to it, or if I want to plant it somewhere else in my garden. It just helps. Or if someone asks me, what is this plant? And I forget, it helps to know the name of the plant. <laughs> Oh, I almost forgot. This is the pot ash that I was talking about. I don't know if you guys can see it or not. It's just ash. So I'm going to top dress a little bit around it. I'm going to scooch the mulch a little back again. It also has, it also has some pieces of coal.
So now when I water it, that's gonna go down into the soil. Moving on to the next plant. I just turn on the water and it's done. So let me show you what I did. I put one, uh, two one gallon emitters on the blueberries and I also put this quarter inch drip line over here along the asparagus uh, bed on this side. And I have this type of squash that just planted itself from last year and it looks like a hybrid of some sort. So I have here something that's coming. You guys can see it I'm not sure what it's gonna be it looks like a gray zucchini almost but I don't know what it is so it's having a little bit of drip coming to it uh, so I hope that would be enough for it if not I'll just add a little more but that that was a line of drip that I had left from uh, from setting up the drip in the vegetable garden and then I connected also the drip over here the I connected the half inch tube poly tube to itself on this side and then I reconnected it also from the end uh, over here so this is where it ends and I have an end cap over here so I put a, uh, a T uh, connector over here and I connected it all the way to the beginning right there so now if I, ha if I add any more plants, I have the drip already set up. All I have to do is just add a another line of drip or maybe an emitter to a plant and I will be all set. This rhubarb over here, I'm not sure whether it's dead or not. I mean, it looks dead, but I wanted to give it another chance. So I set up a drip emitter right here, a one gallon, one gallon drip emitter right here to it, just in case. If it is still alive, at least it would be getting some water and it would... Uh, encourage it to grow. If it's not alive, I'll just get another one next here and plant it over here. And right here, I took the line from here and I buried it under the mulch over here. So you can see it. It's coming from here and it's right here going under the mulch and it pops up right back over here. So the rhubarbs, each of them have a one gallon emitter on each of them. And also same with uh, hibiscus. I have, I took it from here and right there they both have one gallon emitters and i also put one gallon emitters on each of the uh, elephant ears i know these didn't sprout yet but i thought you know what if they are still uh what if they are sprouting underground and i don't see it so i just kind of put the emitters and gave them a chance and if they don't do anything oh well if they do something i'll be super excited about it <laughs> that's what the emitter looks like same with this blueberry and over here so it tees off right here it tees on this side over here and then it comes right back here and again it's buried under the, the mulch right here and pops over here and feeds the blueberry right there and the asparagus right here. And I also put an end plug right here on this uh, quarter inch tubing uh, to stop it, uh, to stop the water from flowing out from this side. You can just pinch it also, but I prefer to do this instead. Sorry for my messy hair, it's super hot and um, I'm all sweaty. Uh, let me show you also how I connected it to the hose uh, right at the beginning of this whole area. So you can see, that's the apiary, apiary garden right here. And this is another hose that I have. Um, this hose is connected on another it's connected to a different faucet and that goes this one goes to the vegetable garden and then this one uh, right here is uh, in the front of the house and I brought it right to the apiary so I have here a uh, backflow preventer PSI regulator regulator which is 25 PSI and over here what that's what the quarter inch tubing can handle 25 PSI so that's what I put on it 
and this is a hose to drip adapter. You cannot connect uh, the uh, PSI regulator directly to the drip, so you have to have this hose to um, hose end to poly tube or to drip adapter. So now let's go ahead and turn on the water and see if it's working. So just to be clear, I normally turn on the water in the morning, um, like around five o'clock, to water to water all my gardens, um, and I kind of uh, move it from one area to the other. But I just emptied the hose from the hot water because normally, if you have the hose in the sun, it's going to be super hot. It's scalding hot. Scalding hot. So I turned on the water and I run. I ran the water until the hose, uh, the water in the hose became uh, cool, and then I connected it to this, and now I'm showing you what it's, what's happening. So I hear it. So let's go ahead and see what's happening. I think we have to wait for the tube to cool before anything starts coming out. So let's see how long it's gonna take it. Mm, I'm really curious how this is gonna work. I hope I didn't put them the wrong way. I see water coming here. You see it, it's dripping. Look at that, so cool. I don't feel any water right here at this moment. Uh oh, we got a leak right here. Okay, I gotta go turn off the water and fix this. Hmm. Looks like I did. So, looks like I put all my drip emitters the wrong way. <laughs> Oops, um, I have to actually switch them back. I just was looking at the tag at the uh, bag and I put them all in the opposite direction. I put the water flow on the inside. I should have checked first before I just, in, I, I put it in. This is the first time I use these drip emitters. Uh, oh well. Anyways, so now I have to go fix all that. That's why it's very important to read the instructions first before you do anything. <laughs> I believe I fixed all of them. So now let's go ahead and check if they're actually working. So this is how it's supposed to look like. And you can see the water is dripping now. What I noticed with the other way, what I noticed is that when the water was running, it would not leak when it, when it was the opposite direction within, with the side that was pointy. Uh, the water wouldn't drip until I turned off the water. So I thought that was interesting. I'm not sure. Uh, why that is but uh, maybe uh, I think that if there was any excess water in the hose it would help with emptying out maybe that's why I'm not sure you can see, see it's working I also heard some leaking so let's go ahead and check if there's anything that's leaking oh well we all do mistakes and this was my mistake for today and look at them they're both working on this side Over here. Okay, this is working. That's working over here. And that's working. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's the one that's leaking. Alright, or not leaking, but more like struggling a little. There we go. I think that's better. Ooh, it's hot in here. I'm sure I'm not the only one that did that mistake because you can't really tell which way should face out unless you read the instructions on the bag. And I was kind of looking at it after I turned on the water and I'm like, nothing is dripping. What's up with, with it here? Did I put them wrong? Yeah, I did put them in wrong, but it was really easy to take them out and I think that's probably why they made it super easy to take them out because a lot of people like me who don't read instructions they do the same mistake that I did so to fix that problem looks like 
they made it easy to drip to take them out let me see what kind of brand this was i think this is the dig this was the rainbird half no one gallon per hour emitter that's what i used on them and now i have to apply some soil acidifier on the blueberries and i'm done um so uh, i will leave a link over here of some other stuff uh, I will, uh, how I set up the uh, drip irrigation in the vegetable garden and I promise you that actually works not like this one <laughs> anyways oh well um, not a big deal I hope this video was helpful I hope it, I hope it was fun I hope it would I hope it brought some joy to your, into your day and thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again next time bye